And we don't see the competition I drop off a ransom note that your art is missing, nigga uh -huh. Pay us in full with the money Or she gon' get her fingers clipped off like Lil Sonny uh -huh. M-Rec TV M-Rec TV is sponsored by Just Mary Jane And all that This M-Rec TV Live is sponsored by JustMarryJane.com It's a cannabis theme apparel and merchandise. So you can go to their website. They got a lot of dope merch. JustMarryJane.com You see it on the screen. Check them out. A lot of dope apparel. And also follow them on Instagram at JustMarryJane. Lambrack TV breaking news. Brothers disappear along with $3.6 billion in Bitcoin. The founders of South Africa's largest cryptocurrency exchange have vanished, along with nearly $3.6 billion in Bitcoin, after telling investors the exchange had been hacked. A Cape Town law firm, hired by affected investors, says it cannot find Amir and Reis Kaji, the founders of AfriCrypt. The firm has warned crypto exchanges around the world to be on the lookout should anyone try to sell the digital currency on their platforms. AfriCrypt warned clients of a hack in April, when Bitcoin was at its highs. Oddly, though, it asked clients not to alert law enforcement authorities or lawyers as it would slow down the recovery process. Not everyone bought that and some investors retained Hankum attorneys to look into things. That firm found the company's pooled funds had been transferred so many times and through so many filters that it was incredibly challenging, though not, technically, impossible, to trace the cryptocurrency. The first signs of trouble came in April, as Bitcoin was rocketing to a record. AfriCrypt Chief Operating Officer Amir Kaji, the elder brother, informed clients that the company was the victim of a hack. He asked them not to report the incident to lawyers and authorities, as it would slow down the recovery process of the missing funds. Lawyers hired. Some skeptical investors roped in the law firm, Hankum attorneys, and a separate group started liquidation proceedings against AfriCrypt. We were immediately suspicious as the announcement implored investors not to take legal action, Hankum attorneys said in response to emailed questions. AfriCrypt employees lost access to the backend platform seven days before the alleged hack. The firm's investigation found AfriCrypt's pooled funds were transferred from its South African accounts and client wallets, and the coins went through tumblers and mixers or to other large pools of Bitcoin to make them essentially untraceable. South Africa plans to regulate crypto trading in phased manner. Calls to a mobile number for Kaji were immediately directed to a voicemail service. He and his brother, Ray's, 20, set up AfriCrypt in 2019 and it provided bumper returns for investors. Calls to raise also went straight to voicemail. The company website is down. The saga is unfolding after last year's collapse of another South African Bitcoin trader, Mirror Trading International. The loss is there, involving about 23,000 digital coins, totaled about $1.2 billion in what was called the biggest crypto scam of 2020, according to a report by Kynalysis. AfriCrypt investors stand to lose three times as much. Crypto havens lure firms fleeing South Africa regulator fear. While South Africa's finance sector conduct authority is also looking into AfriCrypt, it is currently prohibited from launching a formal investigation because crypto assets are not legally considered financial products, according to the regulator's head of enforcement, Brandon Topham. The police have not yet responded to a request for comment.
China has recently escalated its crackdown on cryptocurrency trading after a frenzied surge in Bitcoin and other tokens over the past six months heightened long-standing Communist Party concerns about the potential for fraud, money laundering, and trading losses by individual investors. This would go down as the largest cryptocurrency loss in history if the money can't be recovered. A report in April found that the 80 largest cyber thefts in the past decade resulted in collective losses of $2.5 billion. All totaled, about 69,000 bitcoins are missing from the firm. While they were worth $3.6 billion at the time of their disappearance, with recent drops, the value of that wallet currently stands at just under $2.4 billion. Recovering the crypto could be complicated by the fact that South Africa's Finance Sector Conduct Authority, which would normally handle these matters, is unable to start a formal investigation, since cryptocurrency isn't legally recognized as a financial product in the country. In January, the daily value of crypto asset trading exceeded 2 billion rand, $141 million, for the first time in South Africa suggesting significant appetite in a market that was largely going unchecked by regulatory powers. This just in, investors hired the Hankum Attorney's Law Firm to investigate the incident. Employees at the firm lost access to back-end platforms seven days before the founder revealed the alleged hack, according to the report. The country's national police force has been assigned to the case, which has contacted crypto exchanges to ensure that the funds aren't liquidated. However, the Bitcoin has been sent through mechanisms that prevent tracing, tumblers and mixers, and large pools of Bitcoin, which is making it hard to track the funds. The company website has also been shut down. The Kaji brothers launched AfriCrypt in 2019, promising investors good returns for their money. This is not the first such incident to take place in South Africa, with another company involved in a $1.2 billion scam in 2020. One governmental group in South Africa has called for regulation of exchanges. Scams and fraud will only catalyze regulation. The cryptocurrency market, while it has done much to curb scams, is still subject to some nefarious incidents. Exchanges are working together to ensure that hackers and fraudsters cannot liquidate their funds, but it does not form airtight security. Kynalysis, in its 2021 crypto crime report, noted that illicit activity as measured by the amount of funds involved had reduced significantly since 2019, but remained an issue. It totaled over $10 billion in transaction volume. These numbers are what is spurring governments to put regulation in place and place better oversight measures on the market. But being such a nascent asset class, it is difficult for them to come up with a one-size-fits-all solution. Furthermore, the decentralized nature of the market proves to be a tough nut to crack. Still, governments are putting in resources to form an effective framework. Global bodies like the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, and the Bank for International Settlements, BIS, have offered their thoughts on the matter as well. MRAC TV breaking. MRAC TV is sponsored by Just Mary Jane on all that. This MRAC TV Live is sponsored by Just Mary Jane.com. It's a cannabis themed apparel. And merchandise so you can go to their website they got a lot of dope merch just marry jane.com you see it on the screen check them out a lot of dope apparel and also follow them on instagram at just marry jane no you're the plug and such you were jokes bound to happen if you slipping or you lacking i'm gripping on the matching ready for the action shots to make you break dance and have you do a back spin i got more kicks than karate flicks my whole team pushing maserati whips you all ig liking thotty pics shorty pocket broke but her body fixed
Peace world to promote your music or promote your business by placing an ad on MREC TV. Contact MREC TV promo M R E C K T V promo at gmail.com. Peace. Oh, yeah, subscribe to MREC TV, youtube.com slash MREC TV. I'm gone. M Rec TV. It's got a music.